Hi everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and today I wanted to take you on a studio tour of sorts of what I did to create my pretty basic, but I think relatively decent, uh, YouTube studio where I film a lot of my videos, all of my videos basically at this point. And I wanted to do this because I wanted to show kind of a more realistic YouTube setup for a creator who isn't a millionaire who isn't <laughs> doesn't have a dedicated space for this who hasn't made like photography their career so they have all this photography gear and all this lighting setup and all this stuff my setup is created almost entirely with things i already had laying around the house and so i wanted to show you kind of what my setup is today and i wanted to go over some things to think about when you're creating your own YouTube studio for stuff that you want to make. And so I'm going to go over four main things I think you need to think about. And those are set design, you need to think about audio, you need to think about lighting, and then you need to think about video. And those are basically the order in which they're important. Uh, the great thing is that if you take care of the first three, the video mostly takes care of itself. So you can, yeah, j people get hung up on like what camera to use and all that stuff, but it's really important to focus on audio, lighting, what's your set, do that first. So let's jump into it and take a look at those four areas. Before we get going with the specific tips, I wanted to just ask up front, uh, if you enjoyed the video, if you enjoy the videos on this channel, if you've watched a few of them, it would be great if you could subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, you can unsubscribe later if you don't want to see every single video, uh, but it's the number one thing that helps the channel grow. So if you could do that, that would be amazing. Let's get on to the video. So the first thing I think you need to think about is what's your studio going to be? What's your the frame of your shot going to be? And so this can be a lot of different things, but what people typically do is you are part of the frame. Uh, you can either be centered or off-center based on kind of what your situation is. Um, I kind of like the off-center look because I have all this space over here to like show pictures and graphics and stuff that uh, are on screen while I keep talking. Um, but then I also have the background filled with some stuff. And so you want to have some depth if at all possible. And this is really hard. So I am in a, uh, in a townhouse that I'm renting. I can't really change the walls. I can't uh, make things bigger and I'm using the space for multiple things. Uh, so I don't have a lot of space to work with. I don't have a lot of depth that I can create. And so what I'm doing is an age old trick of shooting into a corner. So this is the corner of my room here. So I get to go a little bit further back and I'm using uh, on my camera, I'm using the shallowest depth of field I can get on it <laughs> so that it blurs the background a little bit and adds a little bit of separation between me and what's back there. Additionally, I'm using contrasting colors. So I have generally pale skin. I'm actually wearing a pale shirt right now. And my walls are basically the same color. <laughs> it's pale as well. And so me just standing up against the wall doesn't look very interesting. And so what I've done is I've added a computer screen where I can show anything I want. I have these hue bulbs. I'll put the name of them down here. Uh, but I've got these hue lights down here that can change to any color that I want. I've got some speakers, a book that I really like. Uh, so I moved some wall art around to get that in the shot as well. I've got this little Bloodborne character here, uh, which if you uh, have played the game Bloodborne, uh, you know this is the Hunter. And I really, really like that game. And so I wanted to have him on the desk, but I can swap that out. But anyway, uh, the point is that I'm over here and you can really separate me from the background and that's important. So again, shooting into a corner is good. If you can just separate yourself physically uh, from the background, if you can get further away from your wall, uh, that's really good. If you want to put trinkets behind you, if you want to have like a bookcase, that's really good. You can put books, you can put other things on the shelves. That's all great, but you want to be able to really have a good view of you first and then make sure the background contrasts from you and is able to kind of show some fun things. That's always nice to have something fun back there to show people. Next up is audio and audio is so important and kind of hard to get right. And I'm actually still working on it. I'm still tweaking uh, my system to make it work as well as possible uh, because my room is still pretty echoey. And so the problem that a lot of people have and the problem I have is that I'm recording in a room with hard floors, hard walls, hard ceiling, and just like there's tons of echo in here. And so what I had to do was get rid of the echo. That is the number one thing. Wherever you're recording, wherever you're recording your videos, get rid of as much echo as you can. And so the best way to do this is to get soft items into the room. And so if you're in a room with a couch, that's great. The couch is already doing some of the work of absorbing things because the audio isn't able to bounce off it like it can a regular wall. Uh, you can buy these uh, kind of squares you put on your wall and that those dampen the sound and those work great, but those cost money and they're not always um, easy to get or you're not, not sure how to get them up there and mount them without them doing damage. So what I've done is I've gone the very cheap route is I've taken old blankets from around the house and I've kind of put them around here. And so I uh, just put little, little nails into the wall uh, that aren't gonna leave a real mark. 
and I just have them hung up. And so that's really it. Uh, they're helping quite a bit. I don't have full coverage on the walls. Um, I'd like to get some stuff on the ceiling maybe. Uh, behind me, I also need to get some stuff, uh, at least out of frame, I need to get some stuff that absorbs more sound because there is still some echo here. And I put a carpet down. I didn't, didn't even think about that. I recently put a carpet down uh, to get rid of a lot of the echo on the floor. So. You can really do that, and again, behind me, it's all hard surfaces, it's all part of the set and stuff, and I'm not doing anything there, but everything outside the frame, which even in a small room like this, there's quite a bit of room to do things. Um, blankets are a really cheap and easy way to do it <laughs> if you have some of those lying around. I even tried like hanging like shirts, but that got really weird. I had shirts kind of hanging up all over the walls. It was weird. Uh, so blankets are not pretty, <laughs> but uh, they get the job done. They definitely help quite a bit with echo. So that's number one job is get rid of the echo in the room. And then next up, you have to think about how you're speaking. When you're recording audio, you want to speak in as level a tone as possible. Uh, you definitely want to enunciate. You want to have emotion. You want to be able to show kind of, uh, you don't want to sound like a robot but you want to speak at generally the same volume so that your mic levels are pretty consistent from start to finish. You don't want major spikes. You don't want to uh, make it so that you have to like do weird things with the audio to make it uh, listenable so that you're not spiking. If you're spiking on the mic, then you're, it's, it's game over. Like you've, <laughs> you've lost that data anyway. So you wanna speak as consistently as possible uh, so that it's just easy to work with the audio in post-production. And then finally, we're into a hardware thing that you actually should get. Um, you have to record this audio somehow, right? And so the easiest way to do it is to use the mic on your camera, your phone, whatever you're recording with. It's probably not gonna be very good, uh, but if you have you know, reduced the echo and you are speaking clearly and at a level tone pretty much, it can do okay, but I wouldn't really recommend that if you don't have to. Uh, what I'm using is like a $25 lav mic that I bought on Amazon. I'll try to find a link and put it in the description. Uh, it's not a super special one, but it actually works surprisingly well. Uh, it turns out that with lav mics, you can spend a little bit of money and get something that's pretty darn good. It's really all a matter of getting it as close to your mouth as possible and reducing the echo so it doesn't pick up a ton of reverb in the room. And so you can pick up one of these, uh, just run it up here and that works great. Uh, a lot of cameras you can plug it in and so the audio will be synced with the video feed. I actually am recording into an iPad, so I'm plugged into, this mic runs down my shirt and into an iPad right down here. That's how I record my audio and then I sync it in the video editor, but you can do whatever's easier. Uh, but yeah, that's also great. If you don't like the look of a lav mic on yourself when you're recording, uh, you can also do a boom mic and that's gonna be a whole other thing. You wanna have it kind of just out of frame above you pointed at your mouth. Uh, or there are some where you can like attach them to the top of your camera and that's going to uh, just point at you. And so again, depending on how far away your camera is from you, that might work or might not. Um, I like lav mics, they're cheap, they're pretty darn good. And yeah, they're not that distracting. So just try not to think about it <laughs> and it'll be okay. Then there's everybody's favorite, lighting. Lighting is hugely important. Uh, you should think about lighting before you think about your camera. And so that's why we're talking about that first here. So <sighs> lighting is tricky. Uh, what you'll see a lot of people recommend is spending hundreds if not thousands of dollars on like aperture lights and these big umbrella things or these like light box things that diffuse the light really nice. And absolutely, like those are definitely better than what I've got going on. But that's a lot of money to spend, especially on a thing that you don't know if it's going to work out. You don't know how much you want to invest in this thing. And so starting smaller is definitely good. I think that the most important thing to know is general concepts of lighting. So the basic lighting concept is kind of this three point lighting system where you have a key light, a fill light and a hair light, basically. And so the idea is that you have one key light, which is your main light that's providing the most uh, most of the light for the scene. Then you have a fill light to kind of fill the shadows a little bit on the other side that are created by the primary light, the main light. And then you have a hair light that kind of adds some separation between the subject and the background of the scene. And so that's generally what you want to do. And so you want to create that however you can. And so one way to do that is with a window. And so I have a window right here that I usually have open while I'm recording. And that's really nice for me because it's a big light. Sunlight is is it's just a great color. Like things look great in the sun. Like we're <laughs> humans, we just like how things look in the sun. And so having that come in is great. I've got a ring light over here. Uh, so this is a ring light that I got for like 
15 bucks on Amazon uh, when I started working from home and wanted to get my webcam footage a little better. I actually ironically never use it for my webcam anymore. I just use it for videos, but it's kind of my fill light uh, and I can like adjust the brightness to make sure it's not too much on me. Uh, but I use that as a fill light. And then these lights back here and kind of like this combine, it's not perfect, but it kind of works as a, a fill, or not a fill light, as a hair light to give me a little separation from the background. Um, I could do this better. So this is a thing I could work on, but yeah, that's the general uh, situation. I will say that overhead lights are a no-go. You definitely don't want to use just the light in your ceiling. Uh, in almost every case, uh, partially because the angle is not going to be right, it's going to be coming straight down on you, and it's going to cast shadows that you don't want. Um, and also, it's probably this weird yellowy light that looks good just in real life, but on camera it doesn't look great. So you probably don't want to have that turned on. And I will also say that the natural light is a double-edged sword. It does look good, but it also leads to inconsistency if you rely on it too much. So if it's your primary light and your video takes like three hours to record, your video is going to look different throughout because the sun's moving, the light's changing, things are just different. Uh, you're also going to be reliant on the weather. So if you use the sunlight coming in through your window and then it starts to rain one day, you can't film. <laughs> and so that's definitely a limitation. So as much artificial light as possible is good. Um, if you want to use natural light, that's totally fine. Like I said, I use it, but I try to record around the same time every day. It's at a time when the sun isn't coming directly in. It's actually kind of at an angle, so I get a more diffuse light, and that helps me. Um, but yeah, so that, those are all things to think about. And one more thing before we move on from lighting, um, I use a lot of LED lights. I have an LED light here that kind of helps the window get light on me. Uh, the ring light, I think, is an LED. These hue lights are an LED. So it's all LED, which can definitely lead to this banding look. Um, and I can actually change it. I think I can change it here. So if I change this, I might be able to see it. We'll see if this actually worked, uh, if you see any banding kind of in the background on those lights. Uh, but it looks really distracting. It's not a good look, and it really ruins the video. So you're going to have to just reshoot if you get that. And so basically what happens is these LED lights are flickering. They're just flickering super fast so you don't really notice them day to day, but depending on your camera settings, you might catch it. So if you have a camera that has manual settings, you can avoid that by changing the shutter speed. And so typically the recommendation is your shutter speed should be twice what your um, frame rate is. So if you're shooting at 30 FPS, you want to have 1 over 60 as your shutter speed. Or if you're shooting at 24 FPS, you want it to be 1 over 48 or 1 over 50, whatever your camera supports. And that's usually good. Um, what I have to do actually is set it to 1 over 30, even though I'm shooting at 24 FPS, which means you get a little bit more motion blur when I move my hand than normally. Uh, but I think it actually looks pretty good because I don't move that much when I'm recording this. Um, but it helps get rid of that banding. So that's definitely a thing to consider. If you can use just non-LED lights, that's great and you won't have to think about it. But if you are using LEDs, that's definitely a thing that you're going to have to keep an eye out for and make sure your settings are appropriately tuned to avoid getting those in the shot. So then we get to the fun part. What camera should you use? If you've done the other things, if you have a set that looks pretty nice, if you have lighting that's good to go, if your audio is clean, then all of these things have really been taken care of for you anyway, and whatever you use to film is going to be pretty good. Uh, if you have a modern phone from the last like couple years, then the odds are the camera in your phone is already good enough. Um, I could shoot this on my iPhone and it's going to be pretty nice. Um, I choose not to actually because uh, most phones over sharpen their video and they don't have as much depth of field. Uh, like I said, you want to get some depth and separation from your background. And for me, uh, with my setup, because I don't have a lot of space, the depth of field I can get from this camera from the Sony is a little bit more than I can get from the iPhone. And so even though the iPhone can get crisper video in some cases, I actually don't like it as much for YouTube. I don't think it looks quite as good. It doesn't quite, like doesn't look quite as flattering, uh, in my opinion. But you can totally use it, and it looks great. It shoots 4K. It shoots um, incredibly high resolution uh, video, high quality video, and a lot of Android phones do as well these days. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy phones are really nice. Uh, the pixels aren't quite as good. But anyway, this I I, I won't get too into it. But if you have a modern phone from like the last couple years, the odds are you can take really nice video already. And because you've set up your audio, your lighting, and your set design uh, to look nice already, it's not going to make as much of a difference as you might think going from a like the camera in your phone to a $5,000 DSLR. And so I'm not going to make a recommendation on exactly what camera you should get. 
There's a million out there and there's really no one right answer. I do really recommend starting with your phone and seeing how that works. Uh, if that works for you, then great. Just keep going with that. Uh, it's already with you. It's gonna be easy to get that footage from your phone to your computer or whatever you're doing to do your editing. If you're shooting on an iPhone, it's so easy to just airdrop it to your iPad or your Mac or whatever you're using to do your editing. It's so simple. It's much easier than an SD card. If you wanna do something else though, um, think about what is it, it is about your phone that you don't like. Is it that it's over sharpened? Is it that it doesn't do enough uh, blurring of the background? Do you want a different focal length that it doesn't allow? Think about that when you're looking for a camera. And don't think you have to go too fancy. This camera is something that I definitely want to upgrade. I want to do better, uh, but it's been doing oh, it's been doing fine for me, really. Uh, and this is a 2014 Sony RX100 Mark III. And so it only shoots 1080p. Uh, it shoots at a, it's, it's not as crisp and clean as these new cameras, but it gets the job done. It does, it does a decent job. And I don't think my channel has suffered because of the video quality. Um, I would love to upgrade this. I have my eyes on a higher end Canon right now, but that's a whole other thing. Um, but that's not necessary, especially to get started to see if you enjoy doing the work in the first place. And so, yeah, that's my recommendation. If you've done all the other work, this, Choice matters less than anything else. Uh, start with your camera or in, in your phone, then go up to maybe a point and shoot, maybe a couple year old, nice point and shoot. And then if you really are with it and really want to spend some money on it, you can spend a lot more and get some really crazy mirrorless options or full DSLRs or there's a million options. I don't even know what's right for me yet. So <laughs> this is a rabbit hole. You can definitely go down if you want to, but I don't think it's where you should start. So hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was at all, hit the like button down there and I'll see you next time on A Better Computer.